Currently, over 85 countries have detected Omicron. And on Monday, we released updated data for the United States, which estimates that the Omicron variant represents approximately 73% of COVID-19 cases in the United States. And in some areas of the country, Omicron has increased even further, accounting for an estimated 90% of cases in the Eastern Atlantic states, parts of the Midwest, South, and Northern Pacific states. It appears that in the context of South Africa, there is a decrease in the severity compared to Delta, both in the relationship and ratio between hospitalizations and the number of infections, the duration of hospital stay, and the need for supplemental oxygen therapy. The Omicron variant now accounts for 90% of all cases in some parts of the U.S., but a new study shows that although it may be highly transmissible, it's not causing as severe illness as previous variants. According to two new studies, Omicron infections are leading to slightly milder illness and less hospitalization. As the New York Times reports, much of the reduction in severity is linked to the fact that the Omicron is better at infecting people who have already had a case of COVID. While so-called reinfections with Omicron is much more common than with Delta, these cases are less likely to put people in the hospital. The Omicron wave in South Africa also seems to be subsiding, according to the country's top researchers, indicating the outbreak there may have reached its peak. And another glimmer of hope, Pfizer has now become the first company to release an FDA-authorized at-home treatment for COVID-19. The pill, which has been shown to reduce hospitalizations and death by 90%, will be available to high-risk patients 12 and older in January. Also, researchers at Walter Reed are expected to announce soon that they've developed a vaccine that's effective against all COVID-19 variants, including Omicron. And for anyone wondering if anyone boosted might, uh, another booster might be soon, Israel's health ministry just recommended anyone eligible there should receive their fourth shot four months after they've gotten their third. Joining me now to discuss is the founder of Just Equity for Health, Dr. Stella Savo. Uh, so, Dr. Savo, the CDC director mentioned today that she recommends taking an at-home test before being in group settings, but there's still a big problem with supply on this. Nobody can find the at-home test. The Biden administration has made an announcement yesterday that they will distribute 50 mil 500 million in January, but that's after the holidays. What are people supposed to do right now? The easiest way to think about this is that if you're someone who is high risk, and those high risk categories are people who have chronic illnesses, pregnant individuals, people who are immune compromised, you really want to keep it simple and you wanna go back to what you were doing before vaccines were here. And so for you, that's things like avoiding crowds altogether, um, definitely wearing masks indoors and just being extra careful because the message people are kind of getting now is, oh my God, we're all going to get COVID. And if you get Omicron, it's not so bad. That is, that is probably true for those who are vaccinated and boosted. It's probably true for those who are pretty healthy. There's going to be a subset of individuals who are, again, high risk, who may not do so well. And so everything that you've just said about what's coming, Paxlovid is coming, that's the Pfizer drug, the additional tests are coming, that's all coming in January. We need solutions today. And so I would again caution people, if you are someone who's high risk, do the things you did before we even had vaccines out there and just keep yourself extra safe because we don't know what happens if you, you know, someone who's high, high risk gets COVID. Top researchers in South Africa say they believe that they've passed the peak of the Omicron outbreak. Do you think that Omicron, this surge that it's creating, could be short-lived in other countries as well, including in the U.S.? I think it could be. What we're seeing out of South Africa is very interesting because it's across many provinces that there's this kind of rapid peak and it's starting to come, to come down. What's interesting about the U.S. that's a little bit tough is that it seems like places like the Western, um, the Western cities and New York and other kind of coastal cities have these spikes and have kind of the first round of whatever we're going to see from COVID, from the latest uh, variants of COVID, and then the, the kind of middle Midwest areas then go. So it's not clear if what's, what it's going to feel like in the U.S. is that different cities spike and kind of decline, and that's going to happen across the U.S. So then it instead of it feeling like just a few weeks, it's going to actually feel like a few months. I think that we don't know what that looks like just yet, 
But that is some good news that this could be instead of months and months of this, something that is uh, a few weeks. A new poll finds that Omicron is causing more people to get booster shots, but not initial vaccination appointments. What do you make of that disparity? You know, that it makes a lot of sense. The people, unfortunately, many of the people right now who are entrenched in not getting a vaccine aren't going to get a vaccine regardless. And, and for me, I hate the term anti-vaxxer because I think it makes us lump people together. There are still people, people who are unsheltered, people who have issues with access, who cannot get access to this vaccine. Those people still need to be reached, you know? And then there are people who just don't believe in vaccinations. They don't believe COVID is real. We're never going to reach those people. So I think what's happening is the people who believe in vaccines, who want to keep themselves safe, are lining up for more shots. You know, sometimes my friends and I joke when, when they're ready for the fifth, sixth, and seventh booster, like, let's go, because we want to keep ourselves safe. Those who are less willing to kind of believe in the power of vaccines, I don't think are being swayed by Omicron. And I don't think they're being swayed when they hear things like Omicron is less severe than Delta, et cetera. What's interesting about that statement is that we're not totally sure what happens with Omicron and people who are unvaccinated. You could still have some side effects that are much, much more severe, rather some, some disease effects that are much more severe um, than someone who is vaccinated. And so don't let the fact that Omicron is infecting a lot of vaccinated folks make you feel as though because you're unvaccinated, you're just as covered. That, that does not seem to be, to be the case. But I think those who believe in vaccines will get uh, their boosters and those who don't, unfortunately, won't, won't, be, won't be moved by Omicron. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you. If they suggest that I need an IV drip, I will stick, keep the needle to my arm and wheel the bag around. And I keep mean, it in my just I, I'm insert it all over my face. Uh, but, <laughs> but the White House code response team today said that they uh, provide Pfizer new at-home pill treatment in, in an equitable way. Uh, but do you see it, foresee it being equitable? Every part of this pandemic process has had issues of inequity. Can they, have they surmounted that? Have they gotten over that? Have they figured out a way to make sure that all of these processes, including these pills, are distributed in an equitable way? No, they haven't. One of the ways to really address equity in the situation would actually be to look at the, the racist travel bans that we have out now. The travel bans are, are absolutely inappropriate. We have over 80 countries in the world that now have you know, Omicron, and yet we still have travel bans against a handful of Southern, predominantly Black countries, uh, and that doesn't make any sense. And so there's a, there's a question of equity around making sure that globally we're thinking about who has access to the U.S., to our resources, and what messaging we're sending around punishing folks who are the ones who told us that Omicron was coming. That is an area that I think is really problematic, and I hope the White House thinks about rectifying that immediately. But equity around access is something we haven't done great at in this country. When vaccines rolled out, it was predominantly call or get online to get access. And we know that there are certain households and populations that couldn't do that. Same thing for when we rolled out vaccines to, to young people. Um, and now we're seeing it now with this you know, requirement of you have to get online to order a test kit. The understanding and the reasoning behind it is makes sense, which is to say that not everyone wants a free kit. So let's not waste them. Let's have people actually go out and order them. But we need alternative solutions. We need to also say what trusted messengers and community you know, uh, messengers are we using to bring it to people who don't have a computer, are not computer savvy, can't do the things that you know, we would need to do to be able to get access. And so this question of equity is, is one that I don't think that this administration has always been able to really lead with. Because if you led with it, you would offer a primary way and also alternative ways that really um, pay attention to the differences in your populations. And you would also you know, take care of the fact that racial and ethnic groups um, that are historically minoritized are the ones who are most impacted by COVID. So how are you making sure that you, you put them kind of first in line for the treatments, for the testing, et cetera, that has to happen? That just hasn't seemed to happen. And, and it's something that's concerning as we go three years into this pandemic. And, and one last thing, you know, for many poor people, housing is simply not stable. You know, the idea of having to mail something somewhere, it seems like, you know, simple to us who have stable housing. But for people who don't have that, that is not always an easy thing. Dr. Stella Savo, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it.